It was a liberal commission, some of uh, calm simps, and the cause of it all was communist dominated. This, the riots in this country are absolutely communist inspired and communist dominated. When I was a member of the Communist Party, the communists ordered me to incite other of my people to riot. I'm Julia Brown. For nine years, I was a member of the Communist Party, serving as an undercover agent for the FBI. During that time, I learned that the communist conspiracy had been planning and working for years to bring violent revolution to America. It was to be a communist revolution, but the great majority of the American people would not be allowed to realize that until it had already happened. If all goes according to the communist blueprint, Americans will believe that the chaos and violence has something to do with civil rights. Our enemies were quick to find our weakest point for their attack. They knew that racial differences could provide them with an excellent wedge to divide our people. Their strategy simply has been to keep hammering on that wedge, to drive it deeper into our social structure, to open all wounds that have long since healed, and deliberately to create new ones wherever they can. Now, this doesn't mean that there isn't a legitimate need for the advancement of civil rights for many of our Negro citizens. Of course, there is a need there. Otherwise, communist agitators posing as civil rights leaders could never hope to enlist massive support for their schemes. The aspirations of Negroes for full equality were not created by communists, but they are used by communists in such a way that idealistic Americans of all races can be tricked into implementing the communist blueprint for revolution. Having been on the inside of the Communist Party, it's easy for me to recognize this revolutionary agitation in disguise. But the average American finds it's hard to believe that something as worthy and noble sounding as a civil rights movement could possibly be a communist maneuver. Communism must be built with non-communist hands. The revolutionary accepts reform in order to use it as a cover for his illegal work. By concealing the true communist objectives behind appealing slogans and pretended humanitarian goals, the conspirators are able to dupe hundreds of uninformed opportunists and misguided idealists into supplying the non-communist hands needed in the overthrow of this republic. We can and must write in a language which sows among the masses hate, revulsion, and scorn toward those who disagree with us. Members and front organizations must continually embarrass, discredit, and degrade our critics. When obstructionists become too irritating, label them as fascist or Nazi or anti-Semitic. Constantly associate those who oppose us with those names which already have a bad smell. The association will, after enough repetition, become fact in the public mind. By duping the American public into turning a deaf ear to the voices of warning because the topics were controversial or because the patriots themselves had been ridiculed as extremists, racists, fright peddlers, the conspirators were ready to move one step closer to their hidden goals by precipitating mob violence. Riots, demonstrations, street battles, Detachments of a revolutionary army. Such are the stages in the development of the popular uprising. 
The Communist Party will educate and organize the working masses for mass strikes and mass demonstrations. It is through struggles that the working masses are prepared for the final conflict for power. As these strikes grow in number and intensity, they acquire political character through unavoidable collision and open combat with the capitalistic state. Mass action culminates in insurrection and civil war. 